Hello, everyone. Ooh, that is on. Okay. No sleeping. I saw that yawning over there, but it happened before we started talking, so if it happens again, yes, you. <laughs> He's over there yawning up a storm. We're, we'll keep you awake, we promise. Um, but, uh, but if these questions aren't uh, the ones that are keeping you awake, feel free to jump up to one of these microphones. Um, we want this to be interactive um, because we are your community organizers. Um, we, we, first, we, were, we were at scale, I think, when we first thought about this, this talk. And because we all get a lot of questions. I'll let everybody introduce themselves in a second. But um, you have the people who, hey, Bear, who um, run the three largest user groups in the world between San Francisco um, with over uh, 5,500 5, members, 5,500. Um, LA has about 1,000. Seattle has over, well over 1,000. Um, so large user groups, and I even checked. I looked at China. I looked at a bunch of the other ones, and I was like, no, we really, we are the largest. So um, we have built uh, these communities and and sustained them and kept them going for for years, all of us. Um, and we're going to share with you a little bit um, ha about how we did that. Uh, also, we're going to cover a bunch of other things. Questions we guest asked all the time. We'll cover, you know, some definitions, some um, kind of address some community responsibilities. We'll cover budget because that's always a fun one, um, and some of the tools and resources that are available to you that you guys might not know about, um, and some content-related uh, things. So. Um, with that, why don't we have folks introduce themselves? I'll start at the end. Sean Roberts. Hi, Sean Roberts. Um, I work for Walmart, and I'm part of the San Francisco user group. Tisula Kakoris from Blue Box, an IBM company, and I am the Seattle user group leader. Oh, you need one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gary Kevorkian. I'm with uh, Cisco on the events and marketing team, and I run OpenStack LA. And I am Lisa Marie Nanfi. Everyone calls me Lisa. And, um, and Sean and I have been running uh, SF Bay for probably four years from when you started. Um, I'm, I am currently at Hewlett Packard. And so uh, Hewlett Packard Enterprise, sorry. Um, and SF Bay user group. And the online user group. OK, so I think we'll, we'll start out with a definition. Um, there's, there's a lot of confusion between user groups and meetups. And so um, it's, it's a topic we're, we're a little bit passionate about. So why don't I actually have Sean kick off this topic? OK, so um, there's a, a, it's been easy in the US to use um, user groups synonymous with uh, meetup, because that's a tool that a lot of people use. It's an easy way to get a lot of uh, um, eyeballs and get uh, more people showing up that aren't typically part of the OpenStack community. Um, but there's quite a bit of org, uh, groups outside of the U.S. that don't actually use Meetup and some that actually don't even have access to it. So um, we're, we just thought it was good just to at least bring it up that um, I, I purposely try to um, say user group as much as possible rather than the shortcut Meetup because it confuses people. So um, OpenStack user groups are not one-to-one um, -one with Meetup. So. Because anybody can just go on meetup.com and create a meetup, but that doesn't necessarily mean you would be a recognized um, OpenStack user group. There is actually criteria on the OpenStack.org uh, Foundation website to become an official OpenStack user group. Um, and so we want people to go down that road. And the other thing Sean and I deal with in San Francisco, in the Bay Area, it's a large area. I think you deal with this a little bit in LA, too. Um, people wanting to uh, fork the community, we'll call it, um, <laughs> because you know we had an East Bay OpenStack thing pop up recently, and operators of OpenStack, and uh, you know we get it. Everybody wants to be their own uh, administrator of their own Meetup.com group, but you really don't want to do this. Trust me, you don't. Just like you guys, just love it when people fork OpenStack, right? It's kind of the same concept. We are stronger <laughs> together. There should be one Meetup site. So, for instance, SF Bay Area includes the East Bay and San Francisco, and um, we encourage those organizers of those other groups to join us and to be organizers of our group and to have one calendar. It's so much better for our users. Um, so that happens in other areas too. Really try to resist having that happen. Even if you think you're an hour away a drive in traffic, it's just still a better thing to use one meetup.com site for your community user group. But it's in the way that uh it's taken a little while to get the steam going, but um, groups.openstack.org exists to um, organize the, the groups and uh, give um, everyone a, a place to go that's centralized that's um, not specific to any one tool. And if there's uh, many groups, um, it would have a tendency that people wouldn't know where to go and don't understand the difference. And it just confuses them when they're trying to learn. So um, last thing we want to do. Yeah. 
better together, community. Okay, um, so some of the tools that we rely on to build this community, um, you know, we don't love meetup.com, but we're kind of married to it. Um, and so hopefully, if anyone wants to, that should be open source and people should be able to improve meetup.com. Wouldn't that be an awesome idea? It may um, disagree just a tiny bit, but anyway. <laughs> uh, so Sean, why don't you talk about some of the tools? Um, sure, so um, uh, one of the things that, uh, in fact, we're talking about this is ambassadors, which is, um, I'm not sure if everyone knows what an ambassador is, but it's uh, basically the, the most active um, user groups um, get typically a little bit of extra help from the, the um, OpenStack Foundation. Um, there's about uh, 12 ambassadors right now, and they're, they're basically just very active user groups. So, um, but uh, the conversation is about, um, it'd be ideal if actually from um, op groups.openstack.org, if it was capable of being the source of truth for um, new events, and it would actually, we'd be able to have it send information out to meet up and uh, G groups and uh, Facebook and all these other different places that people are used to using, um, so that um, it's it's we can get more people, uh, more people involved, more people know about meetings. Um, I guess you wanted to talk a little bit about some of the the other tools, uh, developer tools. Yeah, well, we were going to talk about um, you know the importance of things like GitHub or IRC, but I don't know that necessarily that after now having been sitting through a lot of sessions this <laughs> week, I don't know that we actually need to to, to go there um, okay. on the last day of the conference. I think everybody's pretty inundated with, with the technical tools that it takes to build this community. Um, so the, the main tool is groups.openstack.org. So if you if you all go there and um, uh, check it out, then you'll be able to find all the events no matter where they're um, uh, hosted, whether it be Facebook or um, Meetup. Okay, so I'm going to ask uh, Gary and Tasula some questions now because uh, maybe Tasula can start because she's the most organized of the uh, of the four of us up here. So um, why don't we address you know budget? Like, how do you run a meetup if you have zero budget? So you make somebody else pay for it. Very simple. Very simple. Um, you ask them. It's a it's a pay to play situation. You ask for sponsors and you allow them to bring their swag. You allow them to mention their company at the end of the presentation. It can't be a sales pitch, but you do give them a little bit of freedom to show who they are because they're buying dinner that night. And and they'll provide the logo, they'll provide a lot of support to you in return. I'm gonna grab that for a second. Um, I, I started running the LA OpenStack meetup, uh, sort of getting thrown into the deep end. The, the previous organizer was leaving LA and was looking for a successor, so he handpicked me. Uh, so every Thursday night, uh, or every fourth Thursday of the of the month, I'm busy and my wife is not that thrilled about it. But some of the challenges that I found were that budget issue. How do you do it where it's no out of pocket to you as an organizer, no out of pocket to your people that come in, but you still give them great content, you still give them a reason to show up every month. And one of the things that I learned and actually dealing with HP early on was a lot of the companies that we work with and have had come in actually have community outreach programs. And you can find the right people within, H like for example, I'll use HP as the example, that not only did they send a presenter, they sent, you know, obviously paid for dinner in the pay, to, in the pay to play model, they sent swag, they sent a raffle gift, they sent down a laptop to be raffled off to my group at the end of the session. Um, and you just have to learn to ask. Um, I've had at OpenStack LA probably in the last eight months, I've had Mirantis, I've had Red Hat, I've had um, Mitakura, Avi Networks, Big Switch, every single one of them willing to come in, pick up the tab for dinner, pick up the tab for drinks, come in, give a great presentation, mingle with the group, and um, it, it, it's a lot easier than you think. You just have to learn to get past the point of being afraid to ask. And that, that was actually my biggest challenge, was trying to figure out where you go, who to find, and then make the ask. And they'll, they're more than willing to come down and help sponsor the meetups. Yeah, I think for us, I actually see it a little bit differently. Um, we, have, we meet twice a month, and although in the last month and a half, it's been almost every week. Um, and I don't want to discourage that, that kind of enthusiasm and, and community participation. And when someone comes to us 
with a topic, um, a really good topic, or if I'm doing something completely upstream, like we had Adrian Otto speaking on, on Project Magnum, I asked him to come. I, I always will ask P PTLs to come, and they're not going to come and represent, you know, he didn't talk about Rackspace. Um, so, I'm, you know, he didn't pay for that one. And one of the criteria that I like to use to have people join our group as organizers is you have to be willing to host meetups and to pay for content that is upstream and that come from other companies that don't necessarily. I mean, for, for instance, at HP also, I don't really have a way to cross charge people for the security, uh, for the beer. So I've always paid for those those things. Um, so now, and, and I was lucky, you know, Sean did it at Yahoo the years before that, and I've done it for the last two years at HP, and I was lucky that I actually had a budget that I could leverage um, since we had our company split and we don't have as much budget for things like that anymore I have had to get more creative about it so we try to move it around we had one at IBM a couple weeks ago there, there was one at Walmart a few weeks ago we had the, our next one is going to be at the VMware campus so if you move it around that way you can also share the love and the expense and get somebody else to pick up the tab well, I was I was actually we may get to it in a second, but I'm going to get to the moving it around issue. But we'll 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 get there down. Okay, the list. so okay. logistics and I mean, Tasula is the queen of logistics, so I'm also going <laughs> to ask her. To I'm organized. I'm a, a queen. <laughs> Keep talking, Lisa. The queen of um, yeah, yeah. So logistically, I am the one that that like kind of took the reins and and have not have not stopped refining my program to make my life easier. It was purely selfish. Uh, but I had when I first came in, I also took it over from someone else, and there was it was one of those things where it was a labor of love before I got it, and it was great and it was wonderful, but there was no actual plan. And since I'm a marketer, I like to have a plan, so I made a plan <laughs> and I made a checklist of what every speaker is going to need when they come in, and everything from the type of equipment that they're going to bring to the flash drive backup of their presentation that they're going to have to where I'm going to want them to stand when they get to IBM. So it's been really helpful for me to send that out to their event organizer or whoever I'm liaisoning with um, to have them fully prepared by the time they get to me. And I also have them send their presentation in advance so I can review the slides and make sure they work on our system because we're going to plug them into our system, our AV system, and to make sure that they're not too hyper promotional. But we'll save that. Part of the yeah. talk later. <laughs> go ahead. Want to just dive into that one right there? Or? Yep. Okay. Um, one of the things that I, it took me a while to get accustomed to was being able to tell a presenter that what they want to come and do is not right. Because I, anybody who has been to, this, you know, especially something like an OpenStack meetup, um, the developers, the coders, the, the guys that are running OpenStack and businesses, are going to run like rats when you turn on the light in a garage if someone comes in with a real salesy presentation. So it took a while to be able to help, you know, even as I reviewing their presentations just like Tasula does, to be able to have someone tone it down. And I actually periodically have to moderate a presenter when they sort of send me one thing and then show up with something else. And you have to get, you have to sort of get them back on track and, you know, by probably sort of segueing into where we're going with content and what we like to see. But, you know, my sort of stuff is under the hood, lessons learned, you know, take a technical deep dive on something, show the people, show the attendees something they're not used to seeing and taking them sort of behind the curtains and showing them really what's making OpenStack tick and what's making it easier for them to deploy in their businesses. Yeah, so I would just add, um, one of the things that's um, early on when I was at Yahoo, and um, I was uh, working to build um, a culture around OpenStack at Yahoo, and that was um, my ulterior motive. Um, also, we needed somebody to run the, the, the group since uh, the person that was was moving on. Um, that uh, um, I organized a bunch of hackathons, and it was actually, um, we focused a lot more about um, writing code and how to commit. So um, I trained a lot of people. Um, uh, one of the things we did is we tried to find people jobs. It was, you know, it was pretty much just guerrilla OpenStack. So um, then as time went on and um, things kind of evolved a little more, um, we started bringing in all the local um, PTLs or core reviewers. Um, like we've had recently, we've had Mike Perez, we've had Adrian Otto, we've had a bunch of different people. Morgan. We're fortunate that these people are in the area. Yeah. So um, if you do know well, of- They'll fly in. Yeah, I mean, they, they have yeah. folks fly yeah, in. Yeah, people will, that's definitely yeah. true. Uh, but even better uh, to help build the local community that if you know that you have um, core reviewers, it doesn't have to be a PTL, but, or somebody who is a really active contributor in your mm -hmm. neighborhood, you know, ask them to speak. 
you know, do it as much as they, can, they feel comfortable doing it. People really like the, it is all about the content. And we used to um, toggle between having beginner sessions and advanced sessions. It kind of, that's why we were doing it every other week. Um, and it just got too complicated to try to do it that way. But now we just really publish what the content is going to be ahead of time. So a couple of weeks ago, we had a couple of cores from Keystone come and speak. And it was a very, very technical discussion. And so we even gave our user group homework before. We're like, go to this <laughs> website. It's because we knew, uh, you know, if you were a beginner or if you were just there looking for a job, you know, this was not going to be the meetup for you. And, and every time before we do a meetup, I stand up and I talk about what the next five meetups are going to be. So people do get to know what's coming ahead. And on that one especially, I was like, this is, we are going to go deep on this one. It's going to be very, very technical. And so many people came up to me after that meetup and they were so grateful for that level of content. So I would say, you know, go as deep as you, as you can. I mean, that's, people are in this industry because of the technology. And so um, don't be afraid of the, of the seriously deep technical dive. Maybe not every time, but, um, and then just let your community know that that's what's going to happen. Um, I have a few more questions, but I, if there's any burning questions from the audience, uh, we can take those or not burning questions. Any, <coughs> Small burning sm questions. any Small sizzling burning questions? questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no questions yet. Yeah, okay. Maybe well, I should start asking the audience here questions. Here so um, I, I see somebody from uh, HP, Cisco, uh, IBM. You're also hardware sellers. I mean. You said don't let a vendor go specific I into their product, but what if you wanted, so okay, Dell has, here's their solution, well here's, and have somebody from HP and give their architecture solution or any of the other, so, I mean if Moranis comes in, you know, they're going to be talking about fuel, is, is, do you find that that's okay or if, as long as they, people know up, up front? Yeah, I, I, I usually tell the presenters, you know, keep your keep your slides community oriented, upstream. But obviously, if you're going to show a demo, it's probably going to have your company logo somewhere on that demo. You know, and 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 if the demo is, is interesting technology and it is relevant to OpenStack, we get a lot of requests for things that Sean and I have to say. What what does this have to do with OpenStack? Yeah. But if it's relevant for OpenStack, then of course that's fine. And with the swag thing too. At first, um, when I first started hosting it at HP, I was a little bit careful about just passing out swag because I didn't want it to seem like it was a big marketing event. Um, but after the community was coming over and over again and then was trusting us, it turns out they love swag. We've given away a lot of t-shirts, right. yeah. a lot. Of <laughs> yeah, there's Those been a Those glowing cubes, my kids love them, so <laughs> they much appreciate I mean, them. The way I look at it is when I run my meetup, I'm Gary the meetup organizer, I'm not Gary from Cisco. I run, I run, it, independent, I run it independently, that's why I don't have an issue with Badges off is the yeah, one of the terms. Exactly, it's it's a completely neutral environment, and anybody's welcome to come in as long as it makes as long as the content makes sense. Um, I just wanted to circle back around on the on the sponsors thing. You know, um, I run the uh, one of the uh, user groups in the UK, and um, you know, we so far over the last uh, what is it, eighteen months, two years, we've pretty much had a stable set of sponsors. They're not quite as generous as the sponsors <laughs> in the US by the sounds of it. Do you guys have um, a stable set of sponsors or are you rotating them for each event depending on who's speaking? I would say they rotate just depending on who's willing to give the money on that day. Right. Um, I, we don't tend to always tie it to speakers, but, um, and, and I wouldn't say it's stable. They've, but you know, we've been running our user group for five years, and so it's <laughs> a revolving door of different people all the time. And you know, we've had Marantis in there in a big way in the past, and they're not so much anymore. And, and we've had you know, Swift Stack. We've had a lot of great companies, um, Cisco. Um, so it kind of goes like this a little bit, and sometimes you have to pass so the hat around. There's a way of fixing that. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trying to organize. I had, I had this uh, kind of air cover from my finance department when I was at Yahoo. Um, so they, they cover pretty much anything I wanted to a lar large extent, so that got me spoiled. Um, now that I don't necessarily have that anymore, um, but I have a version of it at Walmart. So I'm, I'm uh, training a finance guy to be um, <laughs> essentially my banker. Um, and I, I want to do it actually for all of us in the West Coast. Um, yeah. And so um, the, yeah. Idea is, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the idea is that we, um, we all uh, basically dole in the money and it gives us some uh, breathing room in between um, you know, the, yeah. the peak, the valleys. Uh, but also, um, uh, Lisa had, um, with H most uh, HP's help, um, and some really great um, or event organizers, organized some awesome uh, birthday parties in the past. But the problem with doing that is that it's in a massive amount of work to gather the money and to get everything paid. So 
just running that through HP is uh, a nightmare and makes it undue burden on her as opposed to putting the burden back on the team. So, um, so I'd like to do that um, partially so that we could, when we do have these birthday party events or larger events, that we can uh, build up the slush fund to support that ahead of time. We actually know the budget. It's not you know, something we have to go asking for people afterwards saying, you know, you said you're going to pay. Could you please pay now? So, um, so just, just that. So. Yeah, and we'll, um, so we have about six more minutes. Um, we will take this question. We'll also talk about some of the um, the, the tools available to you. Uh, and we didn't really address things like burnout. You know, one, one thing I would say is you need multiple organizers of your of your community user group. And, I mean, you said your wife is not too pleased with the frequency. <laughs> so I think we're all married to OpenStack, really, if we want to know who our first wife is. Um, it's been a labor of love, and if you don't, absolutely love this community, you will burn out really, really quickly. Um, but just trying to spread that love around has been you know, really essential to, to not being completely burned out all the time. Um, but okay, let's take this question. Um, I was just curious, is this, um, these user groups, are they a show and tell? Or do you also get into kind of a brainstorming, let's work on a common problem that matters to the community? So, you know, it's not like one company or, you know, any one presenter presenting and maybe a Q&A at the end, but it's like, you know, the whole audience is the panel. Take this one. Yeah, this, <laughs> this is actually something that happens almost every single meetup that I host, um, that we have a longer Q&A than presentation. I actually have to kick people out sometimes because our elevators lock at a certain time and we do not want to be staying there for all night. Um, but yes, when, when the presentation is over and the speaker asks for questions and there are definitely plenty of questions directed to the speaker but you will also find that there are plenty of questions directed to each other because people say oh I'm from here and I do this and I do this this gentleman at my last meetup last month literally showed up and just said my open stack is broken help and like he had like <laughs> six people running over to him during cupcake time you know to go to go help him so yeah, it was great time? we have cupcake <laughs> cupcake they have a kegerator yeah, and have cupcake really you good have food and really good beer in seattle you need but to yes, go to the seattle um, meetup. but yes that that happens very often organically it's not something that we honestly plan but it, it definitely always happens i mean another scenario i mean a different kind of scenario but yeah i think to, to sula's point every meetup turns into probably a longer discussion than presentation Absolutely. and um, the other thing that I've tried a couple of times and has worked out really well is just as opposed to a single presenter getting a group of my regular participants and we do a series of lightning talks everybody gets 10 minutes at the mic and it that that also becomes a little problematic because the 10 minutes goes by very very quickly and the Q&A goes by very you know generally wants to go longer than the presentation itself so um, <laughs> You know, that's another thing to consider, too, because the one thing I've learned after a lot of years in tech is that people in tech have no shortage of ability of talking about what they know about. So, But you have to. <laughs> they're also shy. I mean, this is, you know, we've done it both ways, yeah. but we find if we have at least 10 minutes of prepared remarks, and I mean, the beer helps, too, but um, <laughs> it does. And when that second beer kicks in, people get a little bit unshy, less shy. Um, but it helps to have a, some sort of prepared thing at the beginning just to get that conversation started. Yeah. But I mean, I was just going to add to that, that, you know, that that interactive part of it, I mean, for us certainly is as important yeah. as the actual speakers, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, the, we we try not to pack. I mean, we kind of do two two speakers per event, but we specifically have, you know, a big chunk of time there. That's just for people to drink beer and talk right. to each other because, you know, that's half the point, right? That's the community yeah. part I'd of it. That's 90 percent of the point, at least yeah. for me. Yeah. yeah. So uh, one of the things. Um, kind of pitch something that we've done before. So it's um, it's part of the upstream university that um, Stefano and Luik started a few years ago, and it's now um, on the front end of every single conference, which is super awesome. <laughs> um, so I snagged a little part of it, the, the Lego activity. I don't know if anybody's sat through that, but it's super fun. Um, it requires a lot of Legos, about $2,000 US of Legos. Um, but I've done it like five times now. Um, I did it at um, a university that I uh, work with on, um, and um, I've done it a few other places, and we, we did it um, uh, last year um, at uh, the OpenStack comp, um, our user group as well. Why don't you, for those so. who don't know, it's, it's this fantastic game that helps you 
understand how to participate in this community upstream, called the Upstream Lego Game or something like that. And it's not so, even really a so game, but it's a way for people, the Lego is really just a tool that's being used to have people understand how to work together. And I mean, just really quickly, why don't you explain just the three groups and, because you guys should take this idea for your meetups. I'm sure it's, <laughs> and it's actually on slide, um, SlideShare as well. Um, but it, the basic idea is that um, it teaches um, ad adult, agile, Agile, method, uh, agile methods, um, so you, you break up into a, a couple teams um, to create a project, and it's essentially creating a building that's going to be attached to another building. Um, and you have some people that rove, and um, you have some groups act as companies. But the, um, and you go through a whole build process, a couple cycles of it, but the, the whole point of it really is to not only teach how OpenStack works in a unique way without actually writing any code, um, but it, um, it uh, it's like a hackathon but without code. And that's really um, how I got started getting, in, uh, the, getting involved with the community. And actually, I really want to bring it back. I'm getting to the point where um, I can have enough time to bring the hackathons back. So we can actually have a set time uh, twice a month where people just know if they show up this place, there's going to be some guys working on code. And um, they can help with the commit. They can um, uh, talk about a particular feature that's getting pushed in a project that's um, of interest. And, you know, we just get that set schedule down. But um, anyway, the, it's a lot of fun. Um, I'd recommend it if anybody um, wants to reach out to how it's done. It's, it's pretty straightforward. But, um, and I'd be actually, if somebody uh, wants, I could actually even fly out. Um, Walmart is more than willing to have that happen. So. How long does it take? Um, I, I've run it as long as four hours. But um, it can be a little bit less. It's we did flexible. it in about two and a half yeah. that night. So this yeah, is what we flexible. did for our fifth birthday party. Uh, so there were cupcakes. And you probably mm -hmm. saw some pictures of it scrolling through on Gary's slides. Yeah, the, the biggest um, the, the bi well, the biggest thing is the, the amount of Legos. So I have, <laughs> I have six exactly. huge boxes of Legos. Um, my kids love it, actually. <laughs> um, so uh, and it, uh, you know, you could, if you wanted to, if you wanted to do it over again, you could, um, a region could maybe pitch together, get a couple of sponsors to help them buy the Legos, and then user groups could share. So we've actually talked about doing that for the East Coast, United States. Yeah, so in, in the spirit of sharing content, one of the things Sean and I have been talking about for years, but we'd really love to, to get it implemented this year, is a way to share the content that we do out of the Bay Area with the other groups around the world. And so um, I think you started this with the training when we were kind of cycling through the, the yes. eight weeks of the OpenStack training that you can find on the docs, OpenStack.org. Um, but we, we do want to have a way to share the slides to, you know, because presenters will fly out, and, and if, you, if you make the request, um, but you guys are very talented as well, and it's, sometimes it's just content that people want. Um, and we do know, I mean, we do, uh, one of the questions we didn't get to was, do we Google Hangout or do we not Google Hangout? <laughs> like, we have to Google Hangout because we have people from all over the world that, that pipe into the SF Bay one because of the content. Um, but we want to find a way to share that content with the other user groups. So we're going to work on that this year. And if you have ideas, then ping us. Just out of curiosity, how many of you have ever been to a meetup or a user group for OpenStack? Yay. Good. OK, good. Good. Has anyone not? Ah, OK. OK. No. So one of the reasons I haven't is because it's a couple hours away, so the Google Hangout I missed. But I think I'll drive a couple hours. Where, what area are you based in? Ah, okay. So yeah. Doug Hellman ran that one for a long time uh, with Lenny. Keith Berger, and uh, yeah, it's pretty robust. They're awesome. Yeah, yeah. And, but they're looking at doing um, in uh, what is it called, Buckhead or Bucktown? Buckhead, Buckhead. is Buckhead. part of Atlanta. It's a yeah. Place. Okay. So it's I think end. the maybe the Red Hat office there is going to start hosting. I don't know if that's closer to you, um, but ping Doug Hellman. He's a great guy and. He runs a great community. Yeah, and you'd there. be surprised how many are out there. So if you live in a place that's not a real big city like where all of us live, it, it, just look for it, and you'll probably find it. Oh, Matt, I'm curious. Where in the UK are you? Where in the UK? Uh, in Manchester. In okay, so, you, so you've got a pretty you got a pretty big community. How yeah, I mean Manchester's a big tech hub, so you know there's a lot of a lot of people there, and you know a lot of people working for people like Red Hat and stuff from home. So you know we've okay. got a quite a good spread of, uh, and the UK is not that small, so. You know, lots of contributors who are living in the UK. It's not that much hassle yeah. to travel to Manchester. Right. You know, it's not like the states where you're going coast to coast or whatever. It's, you know. Manchester was one of the first official user groups. Actually, they got your designate before we did. We, we were a little bit lazy about it, but <laughs> but you guys you guys are up there. So congratulations. Who else runs user groups, community organizers? Oh, okay, here. give yourselves a hand yeah. because wow, it's hard. it's hard. Yeah, seriously, good job. Well done. Where's your user group? South Florida. South Florida. Okay, and. 
Philly. Oh, I want to go to Philly. What a great town. Not that I don't want to go to South Florida, but <laughs> <laughs> that's always awesome. But Philly, oh, we should do another. We were going to do the Operator Summit in Philly last year. We didn't do that. What happened? Mid-cycle. Who's Mid-Cycle? The Operator yeah. Mid-Cycle? Was in yeah. Philly? That was two years ago. Yep. Yeah, yeah, because we were in Palo Alto last year. I decided not to travel. We spend a lot of time working out of suitcases. We do, yes, we do. Okay, <laughs> so any other questions? Because I think we're at the end of our time. About three minutes. Oh, okay. We got the I think two minutes? Until five, I don't know. Um, we're the last. We could just oh, keep you just all keep night. So all in meetup style, we should have brought beer and yeah, pizza. No what, did, what, what did we do? The one, thing I, the one thing I'd like, and I made notes only cause so I don't leave stuff. Well, she's got a book. I just have a piece of paper <laughs> torn out of a notebook. So I'm, I'm actually more that impressed with her. The, there, there are a lot of resources available to organizers that a lot of people just don't know about. A lot of them directly through OpenStack. Um, the ability to post your event on their event page. Um, what Sean was talking about a couple of minutes ago was the difference between a recognized and I don't, I don't want to call them independent, but there, there's a new process that OpenStack has instituted to get your group recognized by OpenStack that makes you eligible for additional things that they can help out with. You can get into the swag store and buy OpenStack stuff to have at your, to have at your group. Um, they have a little stipend in the month of July, which is the OpenStack birthday month, and recognized groups get a small chunk of cash. To Very make small. Their, well, I, well, this shirt is from my July from my July birthday meetup last year. Um, well, <laughs> um, and I think one of the, for me, and again going back to when I first took over the group, finding people to come to your group to do present presentations, is they've actually just now created sort of a rudimentary, I'll call it a rudimentary speakers bureau, where you can actually go and find resources and look at people's profiles, look at their presentations, and actually help you find the people that can come help. It's, it's not we're, too hard to find. no, it's, in, it's yeah. actually, I'm trying to remember now where it is. I, I think I, it's linked up groups now. Is it, is it, okay. But yes, and it's, a, it's an alphabetical listing, and you know, I, this, this came up in a discussion when we were in Tokyo and it was a community meeting there and I, I, I brought it up that that was my biggest challenge as a meetup organizer when I first took it up was finding people to come in and you know I'd like to see it maybe even elevated to almost like a Yelp status where the you know where an organizer of a group like myself could actually rate the presenter to help people make that's decisions or actually, is it in yeah, that is it have, okay that's right um, and the other thing I would just say, I mean, I know we're all not thrilled with meetup.com as our basic tool, but I think for me, one of the things that I have found real useful is the ability to look at the other groups that my members are involved in by looking at their profile, because that's a great way to help cross promote your events with the other groups, create sort of an extended community between you know, I've got OpenStack LA, there's DevOps LA, there's a container group in LA, and now we're all sort of starting to work together to you know, cross-promote our groups and our events. That is super, super important. You know, the, we, had a, we did a cloud sling meetup the other day, and so we had the Docker group promote that because we were, you know, spinning up apps with, you know, it, in containers in CoreOS. And so you take your content outside of just OpenStack. I mean, as, as we're all going up the stack now, with we've mixed our Cloud Foundry meetup with OpenStack a couple of times, and you get a nice cross-pollination of communities, and um, that will keep your community going. Yeah, unfortunately, the mobile version won't let me see it. No, so okay. It's different than the, the desktop version. Anyway. Any, any other questions? You have yeah, one? So, the, the, so we, in, in Philly, we got in the rut of one or two presenters every time from some company. And, and one of the first things we've been looking at doing is the lightning talks. And uh, we're looking for more ideas for hands-on stuff. The Lego thing is, sounds awesome. Yeah, so um, and we're trying to find some other smaller hands-on stuff, like labs. Because we get, at least in Philly, we get some contributors, but a lot of just more on the operator side. So we're even trying to look at like maybe labs or something like that that we can go through even for end users. So have you seen any good resources of other things you can do at a meetups besides talks? Yeah, so, um, yeah, oh, it's, it's cool. So, uh, so what we started off doing is very similar. Um, so uh, when Citrix is still involved, um, we got into this, and it was well, probably like four and a half years ago now, but um, 
uh, we got into this rut. Um, it was a good rut for a while where um, uh, Ewan Miller, who was running the, the um, user group at the time, and, um, and a few other people and myself um, would just give like basic OpenStack talk over and over and over again. And then some people started showing up like, yeah, you know, I've seen you talk on this four times. Could you not do that anymore? <laughs> like, do anything, you know? Um, so what we started doing is um, we tried to break it out so that the, the um, newcomers would uh, be able to go to one talk. In fact, I was, for a long time at Yahoo, I was holding two talks at the same time, which like almost, well, it hurt me for a while because it was a lot of work to do it. But I'd have um, one group that was all the newcomers, we'd, we'd give the, the, the pre-can talk, and then we'd have um, the hackathon in the other room. And so everyone that wanted to hack code, go off in the other room, and we'd break up into smaller groups. And um, usually about half of those people wanted to actually understand how to contribute. Um, and then some others were uh, would kind of show up and ask Python questions, and then there was a, a smaller group that would break off and work on some particular problem, uh, like they'd grab a bug off of the queue off, off of Nova or something and, and just uh, toy with it. Um, so it was usually not super advanced, the hackathon, but it was, it was generally people getting together to um, learn. So, um, so maybe something along those lines. Um, the, so it's the reason why I tra started the training project, um, uh, training guides. It's still out there. I'm not involved anymore because I kind of moved on, and there's another team that's supporting it. Um, but it that actually the activity of starting the training guides project started a whole bunch of other things. Um, so I would recommend either getting involved with that and starting to use it and maybe contributing to it. Um, and that could be just the activity that you do out of the user group, just that in itself. Um, that would help you understand how projects work better um, on a fundamental level. Um, an alternative would be to uh, maybe hold some Python training sessions, um, like test-driven development on Python. There's like four or five really good resources, and you could kind of hold Python training with the intent of contributing to OpenStack, because uh, TDD is a really good way of learning Python. Um, I don't know, just a couple ideas. Sure. One more. One more. Uh, you alluded to this before, but um, and maybe there's some guidelines uh, somewhere on groups. But what's the best? Uh, we don't have any money yet, but we've had offers. Uh, what's the best way to handle finances? Do you get your own bank account for the group, or <laughs> cash in a box, or? <laughs> we could probably give four different answers. Yeah, to that, I, I think everybody. We, we all do it differently. Yeah, but yeah. go ahead. Giselle. So I I don't touch their money ever. I send them a list of restaurants that they can order food from in my neighborhood and I tell them you know send me what percentage you want me to tip if you're not there to, to greet the driver but we will not be paying for this if you don't we will cancel the order et cetera, et cetera. like hands off because our accounting team can't deal with that sort of thing it would be a nightmare but you always pay for the beer and I always pay we for always the beer, pay for the beer. <laughs> we always we always take the hit for the drinks yeah of course yeah. but yeah it's usually a couple hundred bucks it, yeah, those open stackers, they drink a lot. No, I pretty much work uh, the same model as Tassoula. I, I don't want to see a credit card number. I don't want to see cash. Um, I would say maybe the one exception to that is when you do the open stack birthday celebration, yeah. they'll pay you out via PayPal account. Yeah. And then, then, then there's that whole transi transition to how you actually spend it. And, uh, and that they'll ask for your, well, I just connected them with my accounting team for our birthday yeah. last year. And I, again, I didn't touch any money, yeah. but I bought cupcakes and stickers. And yeah, but it is funny though. I mean, I've been on the phone with people and they're like, do you want my credit card number? Well, yes I do, but you know, not for why you want to give it to me. Um, but yeah, so I generally try to stay away from that as much as possible and just let them take care of that. And honestly, that's one less thing I have to deal with and all I know is that at 6.15, the food for the meetup's gonna show up, it's taken care of, and yeah, the other part of that is the person who is presenting probably is as distanced from that part of the process as possible, so it just makes life a lot easier. See, and I just, I guess, like to make life really hard, but um, I take the credit card number because I want control of that whole thing because we have a big facility, we have security people that we have to deal with, we have to escort the caterers in and out. It's just a lot of logistics that, that we do deal with and we don't want the presenter worrying about it. So in the few times that I have taken money for somebody else to host on our site, it's just been the credit card number for the pizza. And then we call it into Pizza My Heart and then I give that person the receipt at the end of the night. So yeah, it is pizza. We did a Meet once. 
they have a gluten-free pizza, so we stick to pizza. They haven't poisoned me yet. Um, I know, I'm the worst meetup person. I'm gluten-free, so I can't do the beer or pizza. So it totally sucks. <laughs> so it's... <laughs> Oh my God. Do you? Is it really? Somebody brought me a gluten-free beer once, and it wasn't it wasn't as gluten-free as it should have been. Yes, but you guys have whiskey in your in your office too, and uh, Bear was nice enough to give. <laughs> Somebody's. We were a startup when I took these over. We have. Yeah. I think we have similar stories to tell about stuff that's now hidden in desks. <laughs> yeah. I will say nothing. Um, <laughs> um, so in. I mentioned before that uh, I'm training one of our finance people to be my banker. So um, with intent to take this burden off of all of us because it's a pain. Um, so I was lucky enough at, when I was at Yahoo and I got it started that um, that uh, it was they were very very flexible. Um, it allowed me to do all kinds of things. So I I could pay for pretty much anything. Um, it's not as much the case, and I. I technically don't want to actually deal with the numbers and the details either because it's um, a finance person is much better at that. So I did some of that before. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. Um, so anyway, so if you can if you can start training your own finance person to uh, say, hey, wouldn't you love to take this on? It's going to help the business. It's gonna, you know, go How down many people do you reasons. have at your meetups? Well, we have 77 that are registered. We get maybe 15. But I think I've, I got I just signed up, but I won't be able to be there for another two or three months because I'm on the road or something like that. So we started in November, last November. So I mean, 15 people. You can also just go to a restaurant no or meet at yeah. a bar. Or yeah. Right now we're, yeah, we're going to. A, it's, it's not a bar. It's an outside beer place that. Yeah, and then everybody kind of pays for their awesome. own, and that's yeah. uh, most yeah. meetups started that you know, way. Then you don't have to clean it up, which I, is also nice. Yeah. yeah. They said you guys can have those tables outside every, you know, first Thursday, and just put your sign up and. Awesome. Yeah. You'll grow Tip fast. Trust me. Move I, I cool. took over LA OpenStack and we were 400 members and that was just two years ago and we're approaching the thousand now. So you, there is a big demand for knowledge and I don't know where, how yours works, but I usually get about 50% of my regulars and then about another 50% of just newcomers each time just wanting to learn more. So it, it'll grow. Trust me. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. It's, uh, you know, I love open stack and spread the knowledge. It's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. That's the most important thing. Have, have fun with it. It's a community. One of the questions we didn't get to is like, what do you do with the, the heckler in the room? How do you manage, you know, crowds? And yeah, it's so we and we can have fun conversations about yeah. those things uh, later. At, when we have our next round of whiskey. Right, right. I'm, I'm ready, I'm right. ready. <laughs> right, um, but there's all <laughs> sorts of tips and tricks and, and things once it grows and you start, you know, we have about 100 people that come to our meetups pretty pretty regularly, um, so it's, but it's important to, that's that's the community, that's the whole point, so you gotta embrace it all, all the quirkiness, all the strangeness. Um, diversity was another thing we didn't really get a chance to talk about. Really, really important to have your presenters be of very diverse, you know, women, people of color, people of different, you know, gender identifications. That's probably a Seattle and, and Portland thing more than <laughs> in other parts of the world. But Have you been to LA? Um, true, true. <laughs> that's right, yes. Well, Mike Perez used to run yours, so everybody feels comfortable <laughs> at, at the LA meetup. Um, but anyway, that's super, super important for, I, I have a lot of women come up to me afterwards, or they ping me before saying, are you going to be there? Because like, I'm going to go if you're going to be there. Like, you, you know, you, you made me feel comfortable in this community, and, and we're trying to grow our, our female population and do things like Women of Open Stack scholarships, and, and I talk about things like that at our meetup, um, and it really helps to include everyone. Can you? And they just, you know, here's how it's, you know, I mean, he just laid everything all out in 15 minutes long post on the screen. Wow. Yeah, Ken is awesome. Yeah. He's, he's a good guy. Okay. Awesome. Oh, we're, I know, but you, you know, we're here for you. So yeah, I got to go to my working group That's that I'm late for. Speaking <laughs> of ambassadors, he was supposed to be in the ambassador working group thing right now. Um, but okay, thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody. Give yourselves thank another you. hand. Thank you for thank coming. You.